Bonjour et bienvenue à Labrads. Aujourd'hui sur le... Do you like my French? No. <laughs> hey, welcome to Labrads. Today on the show, uh, this is uh, no mistake. We're actually going to be putting together a little recipe here and cooking up some uh, uh, mousse sundaes or some pudding sundaes. They're going to be made out of mousse? Well, pudding. Jello pudding. Oh. Nice. Yeah, I was wondering what we we're going to do with the antlers. <laughs> But all to, to, to show you actually how... Uh, multi-core processes work. These days, of course, you know, there's Pentium 4 and hyper-threading and there's a uh, duo core and core duo and uh, who knows. It's really confusing. Really confusing things. So if you're going to go and buy a computer, you know, what are these things? We're going to show you exactly what a multi-core processor is all about. So just to get started, Sean, uh, I guess right up until, what, two years ago or so, every computer you bought only had one processor with one core. So what exactly right. is a core? Well, core is the little die on the on the processor itself that will actually do the work. So you're sending inputs in from one side, it'll crunch them up and then send them out in the other, other side in a processed form. Right. So Okay, so sort of like the, we've put some pudding here in, in, a, in a blender. Right. Let's add, add a little bit of more input here. So there's chocolate moussey, actually I guess chocolate pudding. We're going to add some data. Now, so think of this before we Sean turns this on, think of this as a, a computer that's running and then maybe you start up Photoshop and Photoshop's now going to do some work with a picture that you're editing or whatever. Right. The process is going to go to work. Right, so we're going to do a bit of work here. Right. And yeah. unfortunately, while it's doing this, it's not doing anything else. No, it's, it's really focused on this. It can't, it can't manage any other task mm -hmm. at the moment. Or it can, but it's really, you know, if it, if it stops doing something like that and you move on to say email, uh, it will have to sort of stop what it's doing or slow down what it's doing and work on Uh, email. So it'll what's do, called time slicing, right? Yeah, a bit of this, then a bit of that, then a bit of this, right. then a bit of that, which is not a very efficient way to do things. But, you know, Intel was looking for a way to, to increase its, the speed of its chips, and so it went, well, you know what, we'll, we'll, we'll take a chip and we'll, uh, we'll look at it and analyze what's going on it, and actually, as it turns out, it's not using all of its utilities all the time. There's some dead spots on the chip. There's uh, electricity running through it or not doing anything at all. And that's what we call a Celeron. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that's less cash. Uh, that's a whole different show. <laughs> But uh, so, so hyperthreading was exactly what, Sean? How, how did that work out? Okay, well, hyperthreading takes the single processor that you had before and actually splits up the tasks into two virtual processors. Right. And uh, so when one is doing one thing, the other half of the processor can do the other thing. Right. So that's... And so Windows actually recognized, right. Windows XP anyway is, uh, is multi-core enabled. So when it came to, when they brought along hyperthreading in two virtual cores, it looked like two processors in the machine. Uh, that were available to do the work. Right, so we've uh, got now two machines here. I'm going to add a little bit more. Two machines? Well, we've got one processor here. Let's pretend that these two things are exactly the same processor. In fact, we're going to call you the processor. We're going to call I'm, you the computer. I'm the processor. So don't think of this blender necessarily as the processor. I'm the processor and this is my task. And now I have two hands. This would be hyperthreading. So I'm able to do this here. And in this one, I'm able to do this other task. So I can, I can do both at the same time. I'm a very good job of doing both it's, at the same time. It's, 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 not, it's not the most efficient way of doing it, because you're still using one processor and slicing it up into two. Right, and your, your focus as a, as a computer is split. You're kind of having to manage both tasks, even though technically you know, the work is being shared and you're doing two processes. Right. And you're going to get some, it all over the place. So you can do it more efficiently than you did it before. Right. But it's still not fantastic. Right. So, so Intel said, okay, so, well, that's really good. That kind of that improves things. It makes life better. But why don't we put two uh, cores inside of a chip? Mm -hmm. So how do they do that? Well, now you're going to be the second core right. on this. So now you've got, instead of the one physical die on the processor, you've got two. And they're sending data in separately and sending it out separately. So these two processors are now not even related to each other. It's banana -ry. It's banana pudding. <laughs> All right, okay. So I'm going to add a bunch of... Okay, so I could be... Maybe I'm now I'm a Windows Media Player uh, going to play a video, right? Yes. All right. So I'm doing Photoshop and you're doing your... Uh, over there. Let's, let's move this out of the are way. Are we a dual core processor here now? We are dual core. Okay. So you're going to be doing that and I'm going to be doing this. Ready? You're getting much closer to our Sunday. That'd be faster, right? Instead of doing six of one at a time, what we're doing... Ooh, this needs more milk. Um, what we're doing is... Uh, help me here, Sean. There we go. See, this is not how processors work, though. I'm not reaching over it. As a, as a dual-core processor, I'm technically not interacting with that one at all. That's true. That's true. We're kind of cheating. But hey, it's not easy to be 
lab rats. Right, and, and see, he finished his after I finished mine. I'm, I'm already done and he's doing his, and that's, they're not interacting with each other. They're not affecting each other. Right, exactly. So, I mean, you could really go to sleep or you could go off and do another task or whatever. Yeah, so you could be doing nothing and I could just be sitting here. Right. But, you know, why limit it to two cores when you could do two, two virtual cores, for example? So let's, let's do that. Okay. How can we do that? How can we demonstrate well, that? Well, now it would be the same uh, as hyperthreading before. So right. you've got dual core hyperthreading. Right. So you're a core and I'm a core. And we're both going to be hyperthreading. Okay. All right. So you're going to need something in here. In here. Okay. Well, we've got some really tasty Dream Whip here. So let's dump that More in. More Dream Whip. That's. Oops. Well, you know that's going to happen sooner or later. So let's add that in there. And just for the sake of fun, why don't we throw a banana in there? Mm -hmm. Bananas, I love bananas. All right. Mm. Mm. Very tricky. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we'll put this lid back on. All right. And now we're going to do what we were doing before, except we're both going to be doing two tasks. Ready? Hang on. It's not working. You're not doing any tasks here. No. You're not plugged in. Oh, here. Oh, oh you know what? Is there not a blade in there? <laughs> <laughs> a blade is important. Yeah, right back. A blade is very important when you're uh, multitasking here. So while he's gone, um, what can we talk about here? Um, well, I'm going to get a, another banana. Oh, there we go. There we go. All right. Let's put the uh, take the banana out. Put it here. Okay, get out of my wine. Mm. All right. Okay. All right. So you ready? Hang on. Ready? Blender. Get on the blender. <laughs> you, uh, Sean? <laughs> What's this? Uh, and okay. that's how <laughs> dual core hyperthreading works. <laughs> right, so there you go. Two processors, two hands, two machines to do the work. You basically end up with four virtual processors. <laughs> you gotta cut yourself. So, uh, now it doesn't exactly work exactly like that, but you kind of get the idea, right? The idea is that you, know, you have a, a somebody who's doing, or well, somebody or something that's doing multiple tasks and working away at that, and not having to stop to do other tasks. Now, what's coming up in the future is you're going to see um, Intel start shipping things multi-core. We're going to talk about multi-core, not just two, but perhaps four. <laughs> That's very nice. Maybe, <laughs> maybe even eight, 16. The, the limits of something like this are... It's, it's really hard to take me seriously with chocolate pudding on my glasses, <laughs> isn't it? It really is. I was, I was going to uh, actually create a real uh, Sunday here, but it's just not going to work out, I don't think. But, uh, You've got banana powder in your wine. <laughs> well, I do. It's very tasty that way. I quite enjoy uh, banana powder in my red... No, I'm even going to drink that. That's just wrong. Well, that's it for, <laughs> for Lab Rats. Um, that's disgusting. I'm Andy Walker, and he's uh, busy eating a banana with skin on. Uh, we will see you next time. Thanks always uh, for... Um, the email that you send us at feedback at labrats.tv. Um, we won't post this uh, recipe online as we were expecting because it's just disgusting. It's actually pretty tasty. <laughs> anyway, that's it for me. I'm Andy Walker. And I'm Sean Corrales. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Are you ready?
Absolute Beginner's Guide to Security Spam, Spyware, and Viruses, a book that I wrote recently to help get rid of the digital goo. <laughs> Much like annoying people like Sean, viruses can really clone up your hard drive. So um, what I, this book is actually show you how to remove spyware and spam and other nastiness uh, that sort of looks like this in sort of the human form. Um, very easily using free software. So I hope you'll consider buying a copy. No, no, no. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> Go buy my book before Sean is out of control. Check out the local bookstore. Now, back to work.